OpenRun continues to feature as a deployment option in multiple use cases for mobile operators and large enterprise users alike. To find out more about how disaggregated radio access network systems can play a role in future wireless networks, I'm talking today with Ganesh Shanbagaraman, Head of Standards for the Regulatory Affairs and Ecosystems Team and Radisys. So, Ganesh, what role is Radisys playing in the Open RAN ecosystem? First, thanks for having me. We as Radisys, we've been a pioneer in supplying the wireless software for two decades. And this is a standards compliant uh, software, which we've been delivering to our customers over the last two decades. And whether it's 3GPP compliance and later the small cell forum FAPI and NFAPI standards and uh, the warrant standards lately, we've been keeping up our compliance and enabling a large uh, category of uh, customers across different verticals, right from test and measurements, uh, public safety customers, defense, satellite communication, and multiple other verticals in the industrial private network 5G. We've been known for our uh, uh, small cells uh, software offering and later the VRAN offering as well, the ORAN compliant CUDU software, for example. And we've been enabling this uh, through our packaging on multiple hardware platforms uh, and SOC platforms we've been hardware agnostic that way and later the cloud platforms as well we've been able to integrate and benchmark our software on multiple private network and public uh, network public cloud offerings and uh, with that kind of uh, offering we've been able to cater to a large variety of uh, spectrum of uh, customer base uh, in different geographies right from north america latin america uh, europe middle east many parts of asia including Forest Asia. And what kind of market traction are you seeing for Open Run? What have been the recent significant business opportunities for Radisys? Yeah, we continue to see a very consistent traction uh, for our software in deploying in uh, public and private network use cases. And uh, I would say three new categories are the recent uh, traction in these categories, uh, which is propelling or adding more business to us. And one is... Uh, of course, FWA, the fixed wireless access, wherein the customers are building fixed wireless access solution in uh, uh, FR1 spectrum and FR2, which is the millimeter wave spectrum to address connectivity in underserved areas. Uh, it could be uh, big operators or smaller ISPs, and they are building the solution of FWA using our software. That is one. And the second is the CPRS-based deployments in addressing multiple use cases of private networks, and it could be other applications like FWA again. So in this case, we have to integrate with CPRS compliant radios and the SAS servers which allocate this spectrum. So we've been successful in doing this, uh, and this is adding new business. And uh, the third, of course, is the rush, or I would say a spurt in the 5G satellite communications, what we call as the NTN category in the standard terminology, where the satellite-based communication using 5G technology has become very hard right now. And uh, many companies are rushing in to provide build solutions and uh, we are having a new set of customers based on this. So across these three areas, in addition to the standard uh, public and private networks, that's how we are seeing the significant business opportunities coming our way. And what is your roadmap and business plan for 5G? Yeah, we have quite an active roadmap, or I would say an aggressive roadmap in becoming more and more 3GPP compliant and ORAN compliant. We have added multiple release 16 and release 17 capabilities already, which we have announced through the year and late last year and earlier this year. And we are uh, proceeding with adding more advanced features, and this could be additional features like uh, adding support for reduced capability devices, red cap devices, as they are called, and uh, features like an NR unlicensed, which is transmitting 5G in the unlicensed spectrum. And we are also adding features like energy savings, which has become a top priority for multiple operators now. And the energy savings features both in the base station side. Uh, tapping some of the platform capabilities and in the radio side and multiple automated ways of uh, energy saving features like shutting down cells and uh, reducing the 
energy consumption at the base station. These are the things which we are adding in our software capabilities to address the energy savings feature. We are also looking at adding more capabilities through multiple X apps and our apps integrating them for different use cases, which will continue to be part of our roadmap. And we see that this is the way we are going to evolve and the industry will adopt more and more open RAM centric uh, features as we go into advanced deployments. How healthy is the open RAM ecosystem right now? It's a very good question. And uh, there have been questions about uh, whether open RAM ecosystem is healthy or is it as vibrant as it was a year ago or a couple of years ago. What we have seen, the momentum has not stopped and uh, more and more players, big and small, are jumping into the open RAM bandwagon. And multiple traditional vendors are also becoming more and more ORAN and open RAN compliant. And uh, if you look at the categories of different players in the ecosystem, right from the file layer or accelerator providers, multiple companies and partners have come up with their own implementation of harder accelerated file layer implementation. We integrate with them. And uh, we are also able to see a growing ecosystem of uh, Cards and SOC, silicon on chip providers, and uh, we have benchmarked and integrated our software on multiple such platforms. And one of our key differentiators is our ability to be a hardware agnostic provider, uh, integrating and benchmarking across multiple hardware platforms. And there is this category of uh, cloud platforms, wherein uh, we have both private cloud and private uh, public cloud providers, and. Uh, We've been able to integrate our software and provide VRAN solutions both in private cloud and public cloud offerings. And that's another category. We have an emerging ecosystem right now in RIC platforms, the real time, near real time and non real time RIC platforms, wherein the platform providers and the XAP and RAP developers are coming in. This is obviously in its nascent stages and still evolving. And we've been able to work with some of them, big and small. And uh, finally, the category of uh, orchestrators and the SMOs, uh, a few of them have been present in the market already and we have integrated with a few of them. And this is going to grow further and uh, more and more automation and more and more intelligence is being built into the network. And that's the future we see for how 5G evolves and going into 6G. Finally, is Open Run a good fit for private 5G networks? Sure, again, a very good question. And we see the growth of 5G market, the market expansion that's already happening beyond the telco market of the regular public networks. We see immense number of opportunities, not just for Redis and everyone. Uh, there is an increasing demand for a digitalization or digitization of industries and multiple verticals, whether it's manufacturing, mining, various different enterprises and campus networks. And the needs and the demands of private networks are a little different from the public networks. Of course, scale is one difference. We need to be in the smaller or medium scale in private networks. And the ability to customize solutions in some cases, uh, that's also an essential element. The integration required with the existing IT network infrastructure is another aspect. So system integration becomes a key thing over there. And uh, in addition, there is a diversity uh, in terms of the needs, in terms of the band, different bands and bandwidths that are required to deploy private networks. So it forces everyone to work with a wider ecosystem or variety of partners, and that, that's what we are doing right now. And lastly, the emphasis on the security of the solution and to be sure the data security is uh, ensured in these solutions. That is something that we need to work with our private network customers and uh, how to manage them seamlessly as an extension of their IT infrastructure is something that we are always uh, being told as an important step in terms of deploying the solution. And that's the part which we are doing right now in the early opportunities which we are getting. Ganesh, thanks for talking with us today. Thanks for having me once again. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.